Hello and welcome to court. Today I'm going to start working on an outfit using some of that antique lace that we have shown you in a previous video which you can find linked above. While I walk you through the cleaning process of how I'm going to get that antique lace a little bit better and remove a little bit of this discoloration, I'm going to go ahead and start cutting out my foundational pieces. I've already pre-washed the fabric that I showed in the last video, that bed sheet, and simply with washing it alone, no special treatment, all of that staining from age came out, which is absolutely wonderful. If you hear some ruckus in the background, it's because I am pre-washing some other fabric that I'm going to use for this project. But first and foremost, I need to get my base down, which means that I need to take my measurements. I don't plan on wearing any foundational garments with this outfit, which is why I chose this dress, because I don't need a brassiere with this dress. I know that it's not technically the way that you take a bust measurement, and I know that my spouse could measure me, but I also don't want this top super fitted, so I'm adding like an inch or two, just so it's not super close fitting. I want it to be light and airy and perfect for summer. I'm adding an elastic waistband to the skirt portion. So I did want that closer to my measurements, but I'm going to measure the elastic itself when I'm like ready to cut the elastic. So I added about two to three inches to the actual waistband size, just so it's a little bit gathered for that elastic waistband, which will probably be about an inch under my natural waist size. Okay, let's get to sewing Palooza. I'm going to be silent. You will see like <laughs> a different video in the corner of me cleaning the lace. We're getting this done. We're working through it. We're doing it today. Literally every time I say that, that doesn't happen. Party. There's this one, which is pretty medium size. This small one another medium sized one and the last one is some trim and that is some pre-made eyelets. I'm using borax laundry detergent. Blue is important here because some of the staining is yellow due to age and blue helps neutralize yellow. Vinegar, a wooden stirring stick, and two bowls of water. And this water is cold water by the way. I'm using a very small amount of each of these ingredients into the cleaning solution, stirring and adding the lace. And after a few minutes, you can already see how dark that water has gotten. The lace has been rinsed out, so now I need to go hang these up in my bathroom. All of the staining came out, most of the discoloring came out, which is really great for antique lace. And I did want it to have a little bit of age to it because it's antique lace, like if you got it, flaunt it. But you know, not light yellow. So let's go hang these up. I did want to show how I hung these. They are quite flat and stretched out. They don't need to be perfect but I want them to dry in the position that I'm going to need them. While we wait for that lace to dry, let me explain what I'm doing here. Unless I have a fabric that I want to drape, I mostly do flat patterning, which involves a lot of math and a lot of shapes. Depending on the type of garment that you're making, this usually will require some sort of gusset because it's typically not cut on a curve. Right now, I'm working on the top, which is sort of like a tank top shape. I'll show y'all in a little bit where I got my inspiration from, but I want it to taper in a little bit more at my waist, which is why I am going ahead and using that ruler to find out where the apex of my bust needs to be versus where the measurement for my waist needs to be. While I do want this top to have a historic feel, it is true history bounding, and I will be adding gussets to the side just to give it more of a modern fit. 
The gussets aren't needed as there is no crotch or no sleeves to this part of the garment, but it will give a more tapered look at my exact waist versus having it more flat towards the body like a lot of Edwardian corsets were for the time period. So let's talk through what I have done. This is going to end up being the top portion. I am going to have to cut it down more, but the reason why I went with this section, even though I had a lot more pieces to work with, is because of the sturdy hem. I'm using antique lace and I really want a nice thick hem at the bottom to secure it to. So this was absolutely perfect for that. And then I have four skirt panels. I cut my measurement into fourths and then I used that for the waistband. And then after I had this already patterned out, I went ahead and cut this piece out. It is about 32 inches, 33 inches long, which will be about T length on me after I finish everything. Those pieces are definitely more of the foundation of the outfit um, and they're going to get cut down and changed a lot. But I kind of wanted to show y'all how <laughs> I work everything out. I do everything with shapes and math. Um, that's basically how I pattern. Everything is shapes and math. Okay, so let's talk about my inspiration for this outfit. So you know, like the rage with the chemise a la Ren, it was like basically underwear that, you know, folks were like trampsing about in. And I thought we could do that with literally any historical type of underwear. Well, I suppose not any. So I'm thinking like Edwardian feel, but like literally wearing your under things, right? Cottage core to the mat. Here's my inspiration for the top shape. I'm not really going to do like the tiered look. You'll you'll see why. Um, but I want it more lacy like this tops cutouts, but not quite as sheer. <laughs> the bottom will be like this. You see, like that would be too much tiered if I had tiered on top and tiered on bottom. But instead of it being like tans and browns, I'm really going to try to keep like the white light bright theme the tears will be out of these two sheer fabrics alternating as you can see one is more of a stark white and one is more of an ivory those will be very nicely stacked on top of that white skirt base that i made with ruffles the top is going to be very lacy it will have some sheerness peekabooed all over, but very lacy, very airy, very bright. The front will definitely have a more structured, you know, there top. And the bottom will use that hemline. But to tie in that laciness, I'm going to be using this beautiful ruffle right at the edge of the skirt. You might hear the tablet in the background. The baby just woke up, so I'm going to have to call it a day. But we have plenty of that lace, so I know that there will be enough for that hemline. All right, guess I didn't get this done in a day, unsurprisingly. So let's come back tomorrow. Hello, it is a new day. I have sewn pretty much the entire base together. I'm just washing that with a little bit of bleach because the bed sheet that I used from the previous video was surprisingly sturdy, like mint condition sturdy. And I figured if we can turn all the way up and like really bring that color back to what it was, then we definitely should try it. The lace is dry, so I'm going to start mapping that out today and like get into the groove of things. But I'll show you what I've got done. 
Okay, so as I said yesterday, that was not the final shape of the top. This is going to be the final shape. There is a cutout here that I have reinforced with some extra fabric on the inside. I moved that hem down, so I do still have that really strong hem that I was looking for. I added in some sheer panels at the side. And then in the back, it is that same shape in the front, but without that additional triangle. The skirt has been all sewn together, and then I went ahead and I added this tiered lace at the very bottom. There is a rolled hem also at the very bottom, just to make sure that it is secured really nicely and a little bit more weighted. But I wanted to make sure that I washed this all together because this is... This is definitely like a vintage lace, but it is not antique. It's um, acrylic, so it is able to be washed and take a little bit of bleach, but I also want it to soften it a bit, so now it has more of a natural feel. So now it's time to map out that lace. Let me show you what I think I'm going to be going for. I went ahead and hemmed the sleeves. I'm not quite sure if I want to add any lace to them, but they need to be hemmed regardless. And then I did add the lace here. There will be a white ribbon that gets put in. This is just so beautiful and delicate. And I'm not sure if I want to roll up these edges by hand and have like a more prominent V in the very front or if I want to secure them down and have a smaller one and then have a little bow on the front. For right now, it's perfectly fine. It's a new day and I didn't even get to like properly sign off because the baby woke up and I was like, I got to be done now. But the top itself is like 99% done so I can show y'all that. I didn't film a ton of that because I was working with antique lace and I was nervous. But here is the top. I still haven't decided what I'm going to do for these edges but that is down. I have some weaving happening here. I have some darting, which these are not final, but they are in place so that I will be prepared for what I'm going to do next. And then if I shift this to the side, I've got that little side panel. I've gone ahead and added lace to the bottom. This obviously needs to be ironed and steamed. And then for this back closure, let me fix that. <laughs> For this back closure, I use some of those lace eyelets to lace that up in the back. It's not really needed, but I thought it was a really delicate detail to add. And now I'm just taking strips of those different fabrics to go ahead and add the ruffles. One side, I added cording just so that there's a little bit of weight and a fold over hem. And then to the other side, I did a rolled hem. The only reason why I did these different is so that they look structurally different onto the skirt. And then I'm actually gonna take this piece and kind of double layer it so it is a little bit tiered within itself so that there are more layers to the skirt. Also having a rolled hem, 
and having a very light cording in the bottom of a hem will give this skirt a little bit more weight. This is what I'm talking about. See how there's a little bit of difference between the two? And then I will just pin this down at the fold right here. So a straight stitch and then I'll gather from there. But it'll make the skirt look like it has more layers than it actually does. But because I will essentially only be gathering like three skirts, it's a lot less work for me. And that's what I'm here for. I used some quilters thread to go ahead and gather this ruffle and then I went ahead and pinned that directly onto the base of the skirt and I used vertical pins for this. Hello, it is day number whatever of this project and we're making really good progress. Also Dionysus is home so he is working on a project for himself. So I've already sewn on this bottom ruffle. And now I need to pin this ruffle down. Um, I'm literally just sewing a line right through the top, but I want to pin it first because this is a sheer, more slippery material. And then once I have that, I'm going to gather it and then I'm going to be adding that as my middle layer. And then the very top layer is going to be more of this more ivory color. That ivory looks quite dark, but it is not that dark because it doesn't quite lay like that when you are standing up since it's so fluffy and there's also white behind it. So although it looks like a very dark ivory, it does not look like that when it is on me. I was actually able to get a lot of sewing done today. I was able to attach a bunch of layers of ruffles, which is great. Y'all, hey I do not know what day it is because I took about a week or so off just to focus on other things, um, which means that I still need to attach the last ruffle that is completely sewn now. Um, I need to cut out a waistband and then I need to do a few modifications, a few finishing touches on the top. And then I'm done. Here is where I'm at with the skirt. As you can see, I am pinning that on. And then I just need to cut out the waistband. Dionysus also has the day off, so we're working on stuff together. So say hi. Hi. Woo. I did go ahead and add some darting on either side here. Those do need to be pressed into place, but that just kind of flattens out this front area a lot more. And I know that it's flaring out a bit at the sides. I wanted that a little bit. This mannequin is not to my measurements right now because it wouldn't like work on the mannequin. I'm squishy. The mannequin, the mannequin is not squishy. As I was cutting out this waistband, I realized that I did not want for it to have any elastic in it because I wanted a really flat fit at my waist. And I felt like any gathering with elastic would take away from that. Plus, I wanted a really flat underlayer for that top because the whole point of the top half of the dress is that it's not detracting from the bottom half of the dress and vice versa. 
Although I didn't film it, I did use the serger to attach that top ruffle to the skirt itself. While there are other ways to finish this portion of the garment, I use the serger because I have it and because it's easier. And why would I want to make things harder on myself? This outfit came out like an absolute dream. Having that cotton layer next to the skin is amazing for summer. And those very, very light sheer ruffles feel like absolutely nothing. So even though the skirt is quite voluminous, it doesn't feel like I'm being weighed down by a ton of layers. Initially, I wanted to do the skirt in a T length. But after seeing it in a ballerina length, I really, really liked that cut and I knew that it would give me the shape that I was going for and it absolutely did. If you haven't already seen our royal proclamation, we have opened up our Discord to the public. So if you are not already on our Discord, check out the link in the description box below. Squires and nobles receive private channels on our Discord, along with a ton of other perks. You should check that out in the description box below as well. Special shout out to the following courtiers, Pixie Rose, Laura, DSA Threads, Melanie, Serena, GP, Kathleen, Bumbling with Thimbles, Just K, Stid Mama, who have subscribed at Noble or higher. Until next time.